students welcome to our video lecture on casting forming welding me31007 this is a subject for third year undergraduate today we are going to learn lecture 1.2 introduction to welding this subject is taught by professor sk pal professor sk panda professor ajay sikpara and myself nilanjan das chakrabarty now in this talk we will look into the different mechanisms for obtaining material continuity welding process advantages and disadvantages types of joints in welding and weld symbols mechanisms for obtaining material continuity so what are the different mechanisms number 1 solid phase plastic deformation which is with or without recrystallization now in the previous lecture we have seen what do we mean by recrystallization or recrystallization temperature that is 40 to 60 percentage of the melting point so it is not melting it is just before melting for up to 40 or 60 percent of melting point and the next mechanism is diffusion so which comprises of brazing soldering then comes melting and solidification which encompasses fusion welding coming to obtaining continuity the solid phase plastic deformation this is very important this is without any heat okay so with no heat solid phase plastic deformation where atoms are brought together by plastic deformation do you see the grain boundary here okay so that's cold deformation and lattice strain taking place sufficiently close to ensure that bonds are established at their equilibrium spacing this is also very important equilibrium spacing significant lattice deformation lattices are left in the strained state distorted in cold deformation lattices are left in the strained state that means in the deformed state under cold deformation why is it cold deformation because there is no application of heat okay so prevailing mechanism in solid state welding is without heat so whenever we talk about solid state welding we are asking there is no heat now what happens with solid phase plastic deformation with heat so there is hot deformation and dynamic recrystallization that means this recrystallization depends on the dynamic parameters such as strain strain rate and temperature so recrystallization is nothing but a function of strain strain rate and temperature theta okay so in hot state about 40 to 50% of tm the strain that is recovered from the distorted state there is atomic rearrangement and recrystallization there is grain growth across original interface what is original interface that means the actual interface okay then eliminates the original physical interface and the prevailing mechanism the prevailing mechanism in solid state welding with heat now obtaining continuity in case of diffusion so you can see there is a original interface with the dotted line and there is diffusion so this white circles and this black circles so they are diffusing across the interface okay so transport of mass through atom movement so there is atom movement is atomic particles can occur entirely in solid phase or with liquid phase for dissimilar materials thin layer of alloy at the interface so why because it's a dissimilar materials and these two materials may mix these two materials may alloy with themselves and form a metallic alloy or any other material alloy and rate of diffusion is proportional to difference in composition that is fick's law if you remember fick's law of diffusion so it is the rate of diffusion that is proportional to the difference of composition and temperature so obviously if you have a higher temperature there will be more diffusion more movement of the materials prevailing mechanism is brazing soldering 
Now obtaining continuity in case of melting and solidification. Remember, up to the previous slides, we were looking into recrystallization where melting has not taken place. Now melting has taken place. So atoms from melted substrate and the filler. So there is movement. Okay. Liquid provided by melting the parent material with or without additional fillers. So what does it show? There is a growth direction that establishes a bond upon epitaxial solidification of this liquid. Okay. So along the axis of the solidification of the liquid. So solidifying crystals take up the grain structure and orientation of the substrate or unmelted grains. So try to understand solidifying crystals. So the crystals which are solidifying, they take the shape of the grains, the structure of the grains, and they are oriented in the direction of the grains of the unmelted part or of the substrate. Prevailing mechanism is most of the fusion welding processes. Now coming to the welding process advantages, exceptional structural integrity, continuity, fluid tightness and portable equipments, strength of joints can approach or exceed the strength of the base material. This is actually very important. So some, uh, often we find if you have a, some sort of a butt joint and you apply tension, so this joint has a strength which is higher than the base material. So if it is 1, this is 2, and the, say the joint is 3, so the strength of 3 is greater than 1 as well as 2, or greater than the maximum of 1 and 1 or 2. Okay, the tensile strength. So wide range of processes and approaches can be performed manually, semi-automatically, or completely automatically and can be performed remotely in hazardous environment underwater, outer space, in areas of radiation using robots. So remember, you keep a note of all these welding advantages. Now, what are the disadvantages? So it precludes disassembly. Requirement for heat in producing many wells can disrupt the base material microstructure. So you are repeatedly welding. So it is undergoing a welding cycle. And degrades properties may induce residual stress. So residual stress is a major problem in case of welding. It, it affects to a number of defects. Requires considerable operator skill. Capital equipment can be expensive like laser, vacuum chambers, even electron beam welding. So these are expensive equipments. Coming to the type of joints in welding. So part joint. So two are just joined laterally, corner joint, joint along the corner, lap joint, so as if the top one is sitting on the lap of the bottom one, okay? Then T joint in the shape of a T and edge joint, so you are joining essentially this edge and this area. Okay, so that's the edge joint. Now coming to the weld symbols. Now if you are a weld engineer, you have to know these weld symbols. So fillet, it's in the shape of a fillet. Square butt, single V butt, it's in the shape of a V, double V butt. So there's one V here, another V at the bottom. Then single U, single bevel butt, flash, uh, flash flat contour, Convex control, concave control, and G stands for grinding finish, M stands for machining finish, C for chipping finish. Let's see an example. So see here, you have G, which is the grinding finish. Similarly, you have, it's a fillet weld, and it is said that it is at this edge. So how it would look like? It would look like something like this. Or, in a better representation, it looks like Okay. So these are your homeworks. So draw and understand the different material continuity in different welding techniques. Practice the weld symbols and draw different types of weld joints because this will be required for your 
tests and you have to understand the different uh, applications of the different symbols how to identify a weld specification what are the advantages and disadvantages of welding processes thank you hope you have enjoyed this video lecture we will meet again in the next video